In this video, you'll learn how to create a beat in Ableton Live 9 using drum racks. We'll also briefly look at adding effects via return channels as well. The first thing to do when starting a track is to decide what type of song you want to make. That will determine the BPM or beats per minute. It will also determine the type of drum sounds you should use. For this example, I'll be creating a break beat, and so a tempo of 130 BPM works fine. Different genres, of course, have different tempo ranges, so defining this ahead of time is key. In this tutorial, we'll be putting our kick drums, snares, and hi-hats all on separate channels so that we can sculpt the sounds more easily as the track progresses. I've chosen the sounds I'll be using ahead of time, and it's a good idea to audition a range of sounds and drum samples before settling on anything to make sure that what you choose will fit together sonically. Ableton has a native sound library that you can choose from under Packs, but many of you will already have a sound library of samples to choose from. My library is stored for easy access in the user folders of Live, and I've pre-selected some drum samples from my own library to use for this tutorial. Audition samples in your user folders simply by engaging the blue headphone icon and then clicking on the sample. Adjust the preview volume by turning the cue volume knob. In dance music, the drums play a big role, and to get a nice thick sound, many artists layer their drums. A drum rack makes it easy to do this because it allows you to shape each sound with filters, envelopes, and other processing parameters to make sure things sit well together in the mix. For this example, I've layered two kicks and a sub. Let's take a closer look at my method of sound design to make them all fit together into one cohesive sound. I'll add a new MIDI channel and start from scratch so you can see my process step by step. First, I'll add a drum rack. And then drag my sounds into each cell. You can follow along with your own pre-selected samples if you like. Let's record a pattern to see how these sounds fit together before any processing. You can record right from your keyboard by selecting MIDI from keyboard. Okay, so let's arm our track and engage the metronome to make sure that we're on time. Start record by clicking the session record button. and then hit spacebar to stop. Okay, that was a good take. Now let's quantize our pattern to 16th notes. It looks like I was pretty close. So let's begin the layering process by duplicating this rhythm pattern by holding Option or Alt to drag it to the cell below. Well, actually, I just want the sub to play on the one, so we'll just only put it there. Okay, let's play this and see what it sounds like. It's probably going to sound pretty overdriven at this point before we've done any processing. So let's take a look at Kick 808. I like the subby sound, but I want to filter out the click at the beginning to make room for the boom sub. So I'll turn on the low pass filter and sweep it down to about 2 kilohertz. Okay, that sounds good. Next, let's look at the sample called Bass Drum. I like the boxy character it has, but I don't want that tambourine sound. So I'll put another low pass filter on it and sweep it down until that sound goes away. There, that's good. All that we have left is the boom sub, and it's a really big sound. I think a little low pass filter will, will remove some of the upper frequencies that will be filled in 
with other bass sounds later on in the songwriting process. Okay, now let's listen to the whole kick pattern. Sounds pretty good. Of course, we can keep tweaking things as needed along the way, but this is a good start. My finishing touch for now will be to add a little light compression to glue it all together, which Ableton's glue compressor does really well. Let's drag that into the very end of the drum rack. Note that there's a difference where you place the effects. You can put an effect on the whole rack or just individual cells. Notice the line here, and to the right of that is where we'll place the compressor so that it affects the whole drum rack and not just the cell. Okay, so let's move on to the snare drums. I've chosen two snares to layer, and I have them already pre-programmed into a clip. Here's what it sounds like. Let me break down how I got it to sound like this. I've basically just done something very similar to what I did with the kick drums, which is to filter out the unwanted frequencies. I've used a low pass filter on the 0971 snare and a band pass filter on the snare 07 to isolate just the parts that I'm interested in keeping. Here's what they sound like solo without any filtering. And here's what they sound like once processing has been applied. If you'll notice to the right, I've also added an effect to the individual cell. It's a utility which you can access in the audio effects that removes the stereo spread in the channel. This is a little trick that can make your sound sit better in the mix. Putting the kicks and snares right in the center will give more room to the rest of your sounds to be spread out within the stereo spectrum. It just creates better sound dynamics if you put your drums in the center and save the stereo space for your other instrumentation. I've also added some overdrive to give the snares more punch. Here's what it sounds like without the effects. And here it is with. You can tell a subtle but noticeable difference. I followed the same method to create the hi-hats and ride pattern. I added a little filtering and lowered the volume of the ride to make it sit in the mix better. Here it is without processing. And here it is with. Now all that's left is to sweeten up the sounds with some send effects. I have a nice distortion by Ohm Force called Omicide that I want to run the snares and hats through. To do this, we'll load up that effect on a return channel like so. And then run the snare and hat channels out to the sends only and then we'll turn up the send knobs for the return channel that houses that effect. Yeah, that sounds better, it adds a bit of warmth. And you can keep experimenting to your heart's desire with other effects until you find a sound that really appeals to you. Once you're ready to start building your arrangement, simply drag your clips over to the Arrange window and place them on their respective channels in the timeline.
Congratulations on learning how to create a beat in Ableton's drum racks. Thanks for watching. Please support us by subscribing to Noisebox Research on YouTube.